At the end of the last video, I asked if you guys wanted to see separate videos for both the 3080 Eagle and the 3080 Vision from Gigabyte, and you all opted for seeing them both in the same video. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a look at both cards in this single video so you can see what they're both about. And since we tested two cards, it's basically two full reviews in one video. We cut back the compute and DLSS benchmarks and ran our regular suite of benchmarks on both Windows and Linux. So let's see what happened. these 30 series NVIDIA GPUs are hard to get and a lot of people are getting upset at us YouTubers and other tech media for doing these videos. Guys, we're just doing our job. We're here to take a look at a GPU that you may or may not be able to buy right now, but you will be able to buy them sometime in the future. As a bit of a heads up, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video. There's actually chapters in all of our videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as just mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of this video before commenting. We don't have a Founders 3080, so we can't compare that to anything in this video. I also wanted to add that these are the out of the box figures. All of our GPU content is designed this way because a vast majority of people will never overclock their GPUs. And this is more indicative of real users. For people who wanna know how these cards overclock, you've come to the wrong channel. Not only that, the top tier 30 series cards do not overclock well. They sit right on the edge of performance as it is. We recently changed up our GPU video format and you guys responded really well to it. So let's get to the benchmarks and comparisons. The graphs are weighted based on performance of the cards that we are not focusing on from our entire database. The graphs change because the cards perform differently and some cards get knocked off the graphs. Some people don't like it, but that works for us also these benchmarks are accurate and repeatable, which is why we use them. With that said, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magical little pause button at any time during the video to take a closer look at the graphs for a bit longer or watch the video in half speed. As we've seen with all of these 30 series GPUs, so far 1080p isn't really their strong point, and the same thing's been echoed here with the Eagle and the Vision cards as well. It's completely CPU bound in both Windows and Linux, and the 3080, it's basically just not designed for 1080p. When we compare the Windows to Linux performance, again, like all the rest of our 30 series content, Vulkan is better than DX12, and you'll notice that the Eagle and Vision perform almost identically. And that's kind of the story with these two GPUs. They're basically two sides of the same coin. At 1440p, we're seeing the performance being really close to 1080p as 1440p becomes less CPU bound. And again with Linux, it just, it performs just about the same as it does with Windows. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing being echoed with both Vulkan and DX12 here. Let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. And before we get comments with people saying stuff like, oh, it's OpenGL versus DX11 for comparison, Again, we're comparing the out of the box experience. Those people who know how to extract more performance out of their GPUs in Linux don't need our videos. First up with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark, this one's super GPU bound, so the Eagle and Vision are basically on par with each other. It's pretty standard to see that with this benchmark using Linux and OpenGL, it does not perform as well. That's just how it is in Linux. And we've tested this with other kernels and other distros and a bunch of other different combinations and all the results are just about the same. And I've addressed this multiple times across multiple videos in the past.
With 1440p and 4K, we're seeing the same difference across the board with both Windows and Linux, with both the Vision and the Eagle cards. A lot of the differences between the 3080s are ones that you actually won't really notice in real world scenarios. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in Windows and Linux. At 1080p, the Vision and Eagle share about the same performance as all of the other 3080s that we've tested. This is kind of the trend with Ampere. The main difference with the Eagle and the Vision is they're designed to be slightly slower, but run cooler, and ultimately, you will not notice the difference between these two cards. At 1440p, the differences are about the same as at 1080p, and given what we know about how Vulkan works and how the API interacts with the hardware, the way it scales is no surprise. This is then again echoed with both Linux and Windows at 4K. We ran our one hour stress test in Fermark. We couldn't get either of these cards above 61 degrees Celsius in our 18 degree climate controlled office. The result here is actually pretty good, but be aware again that we are running this on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system will be far different from what we observed. We include this result because our open air test environment is consistent and we test everything this way across the board. All you have to do is remember that we like to have zero variables. That's just the way it is. As far as what these cards offer compared to the Founders card, you're getting a tiny bit of RGB. These cards are designed to be pretty understated. If I had to pick one of these cards based on looks alone, I'd pick the Vision. And a lot of people put weight on aesthetics of GPUs, but personally, I don't think it really matters. Uh, you should be looking at your monitor, not your PC. A lot of people do put quite a bit of weight on that, and it just doesn't make sense to me. We also observed that both cards are pretty silent. You also have to remember, again, Again, on an open air test system, you're going to hear everything and these cards were pretty quiet. And yes, I'm talking about observations because they make a lot more sense than numbers that most people won't even understand. Acoustics are really only tangible if the card is sitting right next to you. Most of you will be using your PCs with headphones on, so if your PC is too loud, turn up your headphones. If not, turn up your speakers. The crux of this video is that at the end of the day, if you're looking at either the Vision or the Eagle to be top tier 3080s, you're not gonna find that with either of these cards. They're balanced, they're quiet, and honestly, they're both identical. The only real difference with these cards is the color of the shroud and the price. Performance wise, they're basically the same. The PCBs are even the same. The temps are basically the same as well. And in theory, if you wanted to convert your Eagle to a Vision or vice versa, all you'd need to do is change the shroud. And this is the reason why I wanted to do them in the same video as well, because if I did them separately, the only difference would have been the video title. Price-wise, the Eagle's better value. You're really paying that aesthetic tax for the Vision. If I had to pick one based on value, I'd probably go for the Eagle, but on looks alone, the Vision does it for me. The pricing is available for both of these cards, but again, the availability is zero. The Eagle's going for around 729 US dollars or around 1,450 Aussie dollars, and the Vision is going for around 769 US dollars or around 1,500 Aussie dollars. Now, I've been saying this for all the 30 series content that we've done so far, and I'm gonna say it again. Even if you could buy these 3080s, which at the time of filming this video is impossible, I would still wait to see what the Radeon 6000 GPUs bring to the table. Also, this is probably gonna be our last 3080 specific content piece because I think I've said as much as I needed to say about the 3080s and yeah, there's not really much more to add. And obviously you'll be seeing these GPUs in build videos, but as far as more standalone 3080 content from any vendors, regardless of who makes the card, that's a wrap from us. And finally, I just wanted to address a trend that we're seeing with these videos. After all this time, 
we're still seeing a whole mountain of people attacking us and other tech media for covering these cards. I think I can speak for everyone and say that we're doing our best to share our experiences with these cards and this is our job, but we have feelings too guys, we're humans, we're not content making robots, so put the pitchforks down and guys, some of you just need to chill out. Honestly, the toxic comments about why we're receiving these cards just needs to stop. It's getting tiring for all creators out there. And those people who are commenting this stuff, you know who you are. You gotta chill on the tinfoil hat conspiracy theories with these cherry pick cards and all this other nonsense. And if you repeat that back to yourself when you say it, it actually sounds crazy because it is crazy. And that's just not how this works. We're not getting paid to say anything. We're not getting paid full stop. If you see this type of behavior in comment sections on anyone's videos, you just gotta call it out. And if I see stuff like this, I'm gonna back you up. This toxic PC culture needs to stop someone Oh man, it's, it's frustrating because sometimes I even have to catch myself out. I, I start writing something back and I have to stop myself from replying because it's honestly a gigantic waste of time. You know, don't waste your time contributing to the toxicity. Be positive. You'll feel so much better about yourself, guys. Anyways, I hate doing these rants, but sometimes I just got to say something. Anyways, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And yeah, there's been quite a bit of this weird toxicity with this 30 series stuff. We get it, guys. We know you can't buy cards. We're just doing our jobs. If someone sends us something, we're gonna do a video about it. We're not just gonna sit here and let it collect dust if you guys can't buy it, because that just wouldn't make sense. Please be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and thanks for watching.